Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and holy smokes, I finally did it. I bought my dream car. It's sitting right off screen over there, yet it doesn't feel real. Now being a YouTuber is an interesting job. I never expected to do this. I always just wanted to help people. I wanted to make videos, teach people how to fix their cars at home, in their driveway, using common hand tools. That way they could learn how to fix their own car. They could get a new passion, a new hobby, maybe a new career. But it's always been about helping people and showing them the proper way to fix their cars. And obviously it was working out because I hit 100,000 subscribers and YouTube sent me out this exclusive silver play button. Not many people around the world had this play button. It felt so good to get it. And this is about the time when I realized I have something good going on here. I have something that I'm helping a lot of people and I'm gonna work on this channel full time. Now, fast forward a little over a year and I hit 1 million subscribers. This is something that nobody thinks is obtainable and I did it. I gave up so much. There was so much hard work, so much passion into each video to try to make this possible and help as many people as possible and I did it. And I remember tearing up as I was unboxing this thing. My parents were watching me and I could see how proud they were, even though they weren't completely sure what my job actually was. They weren't even sure if I could sustain myself and make a living out of this. Heck, I wasn't even sure of that. What an amazing feeling. Now fast forward just a little bit more and I hit two million subscribers, so I thought it was time to get a dream car, but not a dream car for me, a dream car for my mom. My mom and dad have always supported me even though they didn't know if this YouTube thing was a good idea and I should probably stick to my normal career. No matter what, they still supported everything I did. They let me use this driveway, let me use their garage, and let me fill it with tools. And for that, I got my mom her dream car. What an incredible video. I'll link it in the description. You'll definitely be chopping onions as you watch that video. It is probably one of my favorite videos to date. And then now we come to present time. Right now, this video, I've hit over five million subscribers. But this time YouTube doesn't give you a plaque for this milestone. And I figured after all this hard work, the 16 hour days, not taking a full day off for four years, basically doing as much as I can to help other people, well, it was finally time to reward myself. Plus I needed a daily driver instead of driving all of my project cars because you guys know what that's like. So I bought my dream car, or in this case, my dream truck. a 1996 AM General Hummer H1. Now hold up, hold up. I know before you start commenting, oh Chris, it's unreliable, it gets horrible fuel economy, they're so slow, they make no power, their ride is super harsh, they're uncomfortable. Wait, 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 hold up. This is no regular Hummer. This is a super, super special Hummer, and I'm gonna show you why. But first, even if it was a stock normal Hummer, this is what I've wanted since I was a little kid. And like any dream car, as a kid you have posters on the wall and this poster sums it up. True, the H1 isn't for everyone. But it didn't matter to me because I found something that I really liked, something that I wanted so bad. So anytime I could find a model, I would go and pick it up and I'd play with it. Imagining what it would be like to have my own Hummer. And what is really cool is what was once a model car I would play with is now the real thing sitting in my driveway. But it didn't stop at model cars. Every single video game that had the Hummer in it, I had to get because I wanted to drive it. I wanted this car that bad. And I already told you I have super supportive parents. Even when I was a kid, they would take me to the local dealership just to go and look at the Hummers. It was like a kid going to Disney World. And every time I went, I'd make sure I'd pick up a brochure. And then I'd spend all night long just looking at everything, looking at the Hummers going off-road and wanting to do exactly that, fording water like that, reading all the statistics going up and down mountains and hills. And I mean, as a kid, this was paradise. I got to see all the options it had. And it's just such a cool thing. And opening up this brochure is just bringing back good memories. And speaking of Disney, GM sponsors Test Track. It's a ride at Disney World. And that's me and my sister right there. And yes, that is a Hummer. Every time I'd go on the ride, the thing I liked the most was going to check out the Hummer, seeing it up close, seeing the interior, and just walking around and getting pictures in front of it. So after all the toy cars, the brochures, the posters, the Disney World, seeing these cars at the dealership, I finally did it. This Hummer right here is mine. And with less than 12,000 made from 92 to 2006, this was not easy to find. And a lot of these Hummers are in bad shape. They cost a ton of money and they cost even more money to fix up. So let me show you the advertisement that caught my eye and how I found this. So the same exact site that I found the $300 Del Sol and the same exact site that I found my mom's dream car 
I've been searching Auto Tempest every day for my dream car. The good thing about this site is it searches a bunch of different sites all at once. So eBay and Cars.com, for example, it'll search all of that so you don't have to go to each individual website. So it's really helpful. And if you go and search for a Hummer, well, there are tons of Hummers for sale, even though there's not really many out there. So I searched and searched, and finally, I found this one. He didn't have too many pictures posted on here, but this was definitely one of my favorite colors, and this thing looked hooked up. And when I took a look down in the description, man, this thing was hooked up. This is exactly what I wanted. And as you know, the rest is history. So this is the third car I found on this website. I'll link this in the description so you guys could try it out. And I want to thank Auto Tempest for supporting the video. I also want to thank you guys because on Instagram, you guys sent me tons of DMs with all different Hummers from all over the United States trying to help me find my dream car. So I really appreciate all the support from everyone. So a reputable shop that only works on Hummers built this one up and customized it. Here's the invoice. It's six pages long and we see the total at the end here. This build without the cost of the Hummer cost the guy $58,000 and that's with a $12,000 credit. So this build cost $70,000 on top of the cost of the Hummer. So let me show you the main things that this build included and why this is the ultimate Hummer. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing and the most major modification that makes this Hummer special is located under the hood. To open the hood, we have to move this push bar. So you have to pull this out first and then you could push the push bar forward so that we have access to the hood. Now with the hood, we have a latch here that you just unlatch and now we can lift up the lightweight fiberglass hood. So when this was stock, it had a 6.5 liter turbo diesel engine made it to a four-speed automatic transmission. It made 170 horsepower and 290 foot-pounds of torque. And that is for a 8,000 pound truck. Now it was slow, zero to 60 was 16 seconds. Yes, zero to 60 was 16 seconds. Not the quarter mile, zero to 60. It was very slow. And on a good day, you got 10 miles a gallon. So it wasn't very efficient. So that old transmission and engine was yanked out and they installed this. This is a Duramax diesel, 6.6 .6 liter LMM diesel engine made it to a Allison 1000 six speed automatic transmission. This engine has many upgrades, full straight pipe, four inch exhaust, upgraded radiator, upgraded intercooler, and much more. So it makes 450 50 horsepower and 900 foot-pounds of torque. And when I'm telling you this thing is a torque monster, I'm not even kidding, this is insane. Why well, you know what? Let's go for a ride. First off, listen to how good this sounds. It's not too loud and the turbo spool sounds amazing. But the best part is with the upgraded Duramax engine and Allison transmission, it's super reliable and it drives like a normal car or truck on the road. And I get an average of 15 miles a gallon, which is better than many pickup trucks and SUVs. And then when you go to merge on a highway, this 8,000 pound truck, uh, we have a lot of traffic right here, watch this. Just to give you an idea, the zero to 60 in this takes only seven seconds. That's insanely fast. And we merge into traffic with no problems at all. Now when you add power and speed to a four ton vehicle, you also have to have good braking. So all four brake pads have been upgraded to alpha brakes, which are huge. And if you're looking over here and you don't see brakes, don't worry, you're not going crazy. Normally the brakes would be right here, but in this case we have a portal axle, which is an amazing piece of technology. I'll explain it in a little. But instead of having brakes right here like a normal car, if we follow the axle into the frame of the car, you can see the brakes are located right in there. And so you can better visualize where these brakes are. Let's step back for a second. They're located right in the middle at the frame rails, right there. And there's three benefits to that. The first benefit is there's less unsprung weight because you don't have your brakes out at the wheels. So you get better handling. The second benefit is you have way more protection up underneath for off-roading and making sure nothing hits the brakes or damages the brakes. And then the third one is with inboard brakes, you're able to fit larger brakes and make more braking power. And when I'm talking about braking power, it is incredible on this car. Why not? Let's go test them out. When I get to the cones, I'm gonna slam on the brakes. So let's get up to 60 miles an hour and see how fast we could stop. And we're a little bit above 60 and I'm gonna slam on the brakes. Oh man, holy smokes. That was insane. I can't believe how hard this thing breaks. So now we can measure the distance from the front tires all the way to the cones using this measuring wheel. And we have just under 140 feet 
for this 8,000 pound Hummer to stop from 60 miles an hour. So we have a crazy powerful and reliable Duramax engine, we have a super strong Allison transmission, and those brakes are crazy good to stop this 8,000 pound beast. But wait, there is more. So when they did the conversion, they had to take the body of the car and lift it off the frame. And since they had access to the frame, they sealed and painted the entire thing. Check out these pictures. This is what the car looked like at the shop getting the conversion done. And since my buddy wanted to test out the weight capacity of his new lift, I was able to get a good look underneath the Hummer. So check this out. The underside of this truck is spotless. There's no rust at all and everything is painted and looks amazing. You can also see the undercarriage protection like this diff protector and the sheet steel that protects the fuel tanks so nothing punctures the tanks while you're off-roading. It also has the transmission and engine protection and basically the whole underside has the optional undercarriage protection kit. So when you go off-road or drive over cars, which I will be doing to finish up this video, you don't damage the vital parts of the truck. And I still can't believe how clean this truck is. And not only is everything looking clean and painted, but it's also brand new. All the suspension components, from the lower ball joints to the upper ball joints, including 12,000 pound axles, well, they're all brand new on all four corners. So not only aesthetically does this truck look good, but it also performs like a brand new truck with all the suspension components being brand new. Now talking about the aesthetics and off-road capabilities, they added a front push bar. And the reason why you need a good front push bar is because this is a lightweight fiberglass, so you want to make sure there's no intrusion of sticks or branches or anything into the engine bay. They have brand new Xenon headlights, which work really well. Check this out at night. Here's a dark road with the lights off, and then when we switch them on, boom, you can see everything. Plus, there's a nice cutoff so you don't blind other drivers. But look at that. It is nice and bright, and these are amazing headlights for a truck designed in the 80s. Now, what doesn't work well are the off-road lights. Flip them on and they light the hood of the car up and make you night blind. And it's just old technology. The halogen lights just aren't good as the new LEDs, which are a lot brighter and throw the light better. And those off-road lights are located right up there on the custom light bar. There's four of them. They're halogen, they're old school, they draw a lot of amperage, and you saw they don't light up very well. So I'm gonna replace those with some high quality LED lights. I need to figure that out. But the other thing that this thing has is a 12,000 pound winch bumper. So there is a 12,000 pound winch in here. It could pull literally everything. I pulled the car with the brakes on and the Hummer didn't even budge. So we'll have no problem pulling ourselves out of anything we get stuck in or helping other people get out of whatever they get stuck in. And the good thing about this aftermarket bumper, is we maintain the stock 72 degree approach angle. That's 18 degrees away from climbing a vertical wall. And this is impressive because stock without a winch, the approach angle is 72 degrees. And stock with the Hummer winch bumper, the approach angle gets cut to 47 degrees. And so you can see the difference right here is the massive stock winch bumper. Compare that to this custom one, which is really low profile. So this is a nice upgrade. Now at the back of the Hummer, we have a custom ladder rack bumper. So we have a bumper with a ladder that goes up to the roof. I'll show you that in a second. And this custom ladder rack bumper has helicopter D-rings. Yes, you heard right. Helicopter D-rings. And the reason why they call these helicopter D-rings is because in the military, this is where they would strap your Hummer to a helicopter to transport it into the middle of the battlefield or into remote locations. They even parachute these Hummers out of planes. So this rear bumper is no joke. It is very strong and it has a trailer hitch on it. And this trailer hitch is something I needed because, well, check this out. Because I finally have a truck that could tow, I picked up a 28 foot aluminum trailer for the drift car and my future project cars. So check this out. This is such a huge trailer, 28 feet, and this truck pulls it effortlessly. It's a bare bones trailer because I'm gonna show you guys how to hook this up. Instead of spending a ton of money and getting everything already put in it, I'm gonna show you how to save half the cost. Anyway, that's for another video. Got the side escape door, the drift car, future projects, all that stuff is gonna be right here. And then I'm gonna have a giant toolbox in the front with cabinets. It's gonna be awesome. And the best thing is, because of my dream car, I'm able to get something like this because I'm able to tow it. And this Hummer tows it perfectly. Barely any sag in the rear and we haven't even done weight distribution. There's no car in here yet. So it's so nice and I'm so glad I was able to get a trailer. So that is where that tow hitch will come in handy. And if you can't tell already, I'll be using this dream truck. It's not gonna sit in a garage. It's not gonna be used every once in a while. It's gonna be my daily. So we're gonna be towing things with it. We're gonna be going off road and check out this room in the back here. There's plenty of room back here for fishing tackle, for whatever it is, camping supplies, stuff that you need to put in the back of a truck. 
and I love how that sounds. And now there's even more room upstairs. And yes, upstairs. So you could actually climb up this and that gives you access to this gargantuan roof rack where you could store whatever you want on it. It's cool because you could actually walk on the roof of your car. Now, not only can you store stuff up here, but if you want, you go camping, you pitch a tent up here. If you're going to the beach, set up some chairs, put the fishing poles out, and you got a nice vantage point from up here. It's pretty cool. So there you go. There are all the modifications to this truck that make it perform just as good as it looks. Now, since this is going to be my daily, another important part of this truck is going to be the interior. So let's check it out. Now inside the Hummer is super nice and comfortable. It has almost like a, a trucker feel to it. The captain seats are super comfortable. And since this is not the military version, this is the civilian version, we have a nice air conditioning system. This is actually the upgraded one. So it's a $3,000 upgrade. So it blows colder and warmer since we have such a big interior. You have a radio and a sound system that sounds pretty good. So that is very nice. It's enjoyable to drive around, just play some music. We have power windows, power locks, your normal shifter to put it into drive and reverse. And we have tons of gauges here that give you a lot of good information. Voltage, oil pressure, water temperature, fuel, RPMs. Now my favorite ones, there's two awesome gauges on this. Now my favorite ones are the fuel gauge and the central tire inflation system. The reason why the fuel gauge is so cool is because we have two tanks in this. So if you see this right here, you can see it says fuel, main, and auxiliary. Watch the fuel gauge as I switch from main to auxiliary. So the main tank is 25 gallons, the auxiliary tank is 17 gallons, giving us a total of 42 gallons, over 600 miles of range. And there's just something about being able to go from a half a tank to a full tank with the flip of a switch. That's really cool. Now my next favorite feature and gauge is the central tire inflation system. So with this, with the flip of a switch, we could inflate all four tires, deflate all four tires, or we could pick the front and inflate just the front or just the rear. So if we're at the trail or something and we want to deflate the tires, you just hit this and the air will get let out of the tires. No need to get out of the car and deflate each one by hand. And you can see how the tire bulges out, which gives you more surface area, therefore more grip. And then when you're done going off-road, you flip the switch and inflate your tires. No more waiting on lines for the air pump at the beach or the off-road park. You don't have to go to the gas station. You don't have to wait for all the other Jeeps and trucks. You just flip that switch and you drive. Now what's gonna take some getting used to, and what I don't really like is there's no horn here. You hit this, there's nothing. The horn is actually located on the signal stalk. And the horn also doesn't sound that great for this truck. It should be like manly and beefy because this is a giant truck coming at you. It's like a little Italian horn there. So we're gonna have to fix that. Another thing that's kind of strange is how far away you are to your passenger. If I wanted to pet Cooper, I have to really reach over there. You're so far away, Coop. I can't reach the passenger side. And the interior here is huge because we have this dog box right here. So the dog box is actually a housing for the engine. The engine is right here because it's a mid-engine vehicle. And underneath this is actually the engine. In the military, they'll pull this out and you'll be able to get access to it and easily replace stuff. Then we have the transmission that goes back here and then the transfer case under here. So the reason why they do this is because it allows the engine transmission and transfer case to be lifted up into the vehicle and provide amazing ground clearance 16 inches from the factory and you still maintain a low center of gravity which is amazing and another reason why this truck is just so wide is because it needs to fit within the tracks of a tank so when this is out on a convoy it doesn't have to go off-road the tanks flatten the ground pretty good so the wheels fit right in the tracks of the tanks and that gives the soldiers a smooth ride so it's actually really comfortable in here it has almost like a, a cockpit feeling to it and the front here for driving is great, great visibility, but let me show you the back. And with such a large truck, what do you guys think? How many people can we fit in here, eight? Well, you'd be wrong. The Hummer actually doesn't have a lot of seating room in the civilian configuration because we have this giant doghouse in the middle that houses the engine transmission and transfer case. So in reality, we could seat four people comfortably and the wagon, this one specifically, has the option of this weird bench seat I guess you could use for kids. There's really not much leg room and there's really not much headroom. You'd hit your head against the top if you're an adult sitting here. But I'm probably gonna remove it and put some type of storage rack or something in here. That way you don't have to put everything in the back. But as a passenger, there's four of them that could sit comfortably, and I really mean comfortably. You have these nice leather seats, you have plenty of legroom. And speaking of legroom, let me show you something on the passenger side. 
This is a really cool option that most Hummers don't have, and it's this knee cutout right here. When they do the engine swap, they add in this knee cutout because stock, it's horrible. This protrudes out here and takes away all your legroom. And as a passenger, you wanna be comfortable and have as much legroom as possible, so now there's plenty of room, and this is just a really nice, simple feature that makes this truck nice to ride in. So daily driving this Hummer is not gonna be difficult. It's actually gonna be really nice because of all the options it has. But this Hummer isn't perfect. There are a couple issues we need to fix. Let me show you what they are. As you guys already know, I don't like to buy vehicles that are perfect because I like to fix them up. I saved the money on the purchase price for doing my own work. And this does need a bunch of work. It only has 20,000 miles on the swap, but it's due for a bunch of fluid changes. The oil's brand new, the coolant's brand new, but it needs brand new fluid in the portal axles. There's four of those. There's two differentials that need fluid. The transmission needs fluid and the filter and the transfer case needs fluid. So all of that would cost a lot of money if a Hummer mechanic did it. Also, we need to put in some new switches for the windows and for the locks because the front ones don't work. We need to add a light bulb for the central tire inflation system gauge. And since we have $70,000 put into the car with engine and transmission and all that, we're gonna make sure that we protect it. So I'm getting some locking fuel caps to put in so nothing goes into the tank that shouldn't be there. And finally, we're gonna add a snorkel. So if we go off road and we go in the water and get a little bit of a bow wake, we don't have to worry about sucking up water into our very expensive engine. So all that's gonna be pretty simple to do, but it saves us a ton of money from the purchase price. And it's gonna be pretty cool to show you guys how to do all this. It's very quick, very easy, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the four portal axles and change the fluid in those. So to get the fluid out of the hub, we need to take the wheel off. So to take the wheel off, we need to jack up the Hummer. And I ended up having to buy a new jack that could actually lift this huge truck. And once it's lifted, slide a jack stand under the frame and safely let down the truck onto the jack stand. Now this might look a little bit different because this right here is the central tire inflation system. So what we need to do is remove this protector right here. And now there's a quick disconnect which we could disconnect like that. And now we could remove all eight lug nuts holding in this giant 37 inch tire. And with all the lugs removed, carefully remove this very heavy 110 pound wheel and get it out of the way. So this back here is a portal axle and it's a pretty cool piece of technology because it gives you maximum ground clearance. So in a normal car or truck, like underneath my pickup truck, the axle goes straight into the hub. So you only have this much ground clearance. You can't get any more than that, unless if you increase the size of the tires. But with a portal axle, the axle comes in from the top and not in from the middle. So we increase our ground clearance significantly. We also allow ourselves to run central tire inflation, which goes through the middle, and that's what goes into the hub. So that's the benefit of running a portal axle. You also have a gear reduction in here. So it's a 1.95 to one. So basically a two to one gear reduction. So every two spins of the axle equals one spin of the tire, basically doubling torque. Now in order to drain this, we have the drain bolt underneath the portal axle, right down there. So that's where we drain it from. And then to fill it up, we have the fill bolt, which is right there. It's very simple, so let's change the fluid in this. I always start by removing the fill bolt first, because if we remove the drain bolt first and can't remove the fill bolt, well, how are you supposed to fill it back up? Okay, so with the fill bolt removed, now let's remove the drain bolt. So break this loose and remove it the rest of the way by hand. Now as that drains out, let's add some Teflon tape to the threads of the drain plug. That way it seals the threads and it won't leak. Now we can put the drain plug back in and tighten it up so that it's snug. Don't over tighten it. Next, let's fill this portal axle up with gear oil. It takes ADW90 and you fill it up until it comes out of the fill hole. Then we could screw in our fill plug and snug it up. And that's how you replace the fluid in the portal axles. Now there's three more I need to do. So I'm gonna get the wheel on. I'm not gonna bore you and show you the other three. I'll get those done off camera and then we'll move on to the next thing. So with the fluid changed in all four portal axles, the next thing to do is change the fluid in the differentials. There's a front differential and a rear differential. I already changed the fluid in the front differential. So let me show you how to change the fluid in the rear differential. Now this right here is the differential. Up here is the fill plug. Down here is the drain plug. So let's break loose the fill plug and remove it. And then let's remove the drain plug and drain all the gear oil out. With all the oil drained out, let's reinstall the plug and tighten it up so it's snug. Next, let's add the new gear oil and it takes about two quarts of oil. And we know it's full when the oil comes out of the fill hole, just like that. So now let's tighten the fill bolt so it's snug, good. So with the differential fluid replaced in the front and rear differentials, now we can move on to replacing the transmission fluid. So this is our transmission pan right here, and we have a drain plug, so we don't have to undo the entire pan to drain it. We also have a transmission filter right here, so this is actually gonna be a really simple job. 
So first, let's break free the drain bolt and remove it. And the trans fluid looks nice and pink, which is good. So we'll let this drain completely, reinstall the drain bolt, and tighten it down so it's snug. Good. So with the pan completely drained, now let's go and remove our filter. Loosen the filter with an oil filter wrench, and then it could come off the rest of the way by hand. And let's try not to make a mess. So out with the old, and in with the new. And with the new filter, since it goes straight up and down, I always like to fill filters up. That way they don't run dry when you first start up the car. With a transmission, it's probably not really necessary. There's a ton of fluid still left in there anyway, but why not? It takes a couple extra seconds, and it's only beneficial. So now we could grab our filter. Another thing to do is lubricate this O-ring on the top here with a little bit of transmission fluid. That'll make it easier to come off when we have to replace this again. And now we could take this and install it in the Hummer. So let's get this aligned and screw it on by hand. And you only want to hand tighten oil and transmission filters. They don't ever have to be tightened any more than hand tight. And the last thing to do is to write the mileage on the filter just for reference so a year or more later I could remember what the mileage was when I changed this out. Okay, so with the pan drained and filter replaced, let's head up to the engine where the dipstick's located so we could fill this transmission back up. And it's very important that you use the correct transmission fluid for your transmission. This Allison 1000 transmission uses Dexron 6, full synthetic. If you use anything else, it will damage it. Transmissions are very picky. And we drained out about 7 quarts, so now we need to fill with 7 quarts. Now while this isn't a complete flush, it does change out about half the fluid, which is good since our fluid was already in good shape. And with this last quart finished up, we could remove the funnel and put the dipstick back in to take a cold measurement. Now let's pull it out, and look at that! Right at the cold fill line, perfect. So with our transmission fluid replaced and good to go, now let's go under the truck and replace the transfer case fluid. This right here is the transfer case. It allows you to go into two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, so let's change the fluid. Start by removing the fill bolt, and I don't know if you guys are noticing a pattern here, and then remove the drain bolt. And it's good we're changing this fluid out because that should be a bright red like our transmission fluid. So with all the fluid drained out, now let's tighten up the drain bolt, and you guessed it, so that it's snug. Then we can pump in the transmission fluid until it comes out of the fill hole, and finally tighten down the fill bolt. And that's all there is to replacing the transfer case fluid. And with that, all the fluids in this truck are brand new and the truck is ready to go. Well, almost. We have a couple little things that we need to do. So let's start out by installing brand new window switches and door locks. So here are the buttons that need to be replaced. Listen to this. It locks perfectly fine, but there's no unlock at all. And then the windows don't work in either direction. So both of these need to get replaced. So to get access to the switches, we need to unscrew the four screws holding it in. And then we can remove the wires from the back of the switches, and finally push the switches out of the holder. So out with the old, and in with the new. And these just push into the holder like that. And a little trick is to add some silicone paste to your electrical connectors, and that prevents moisture from corroding the connection. Then we can connect the wires to the new switches, and screw in all four screws that hold the panel into place. All right, so let's try it out. And we have our windows, which work perfectly. And beautiful, the door locks work perfectly as well. So that is done. And not only do these buttons work better, they light up and they look way better. These buttons are old and tired, so that's beautiful. Glad that is done. Next, let's real quickly replace the light bulb inside the central tire inflation system gauge. At night, you can see the lights work on everything except this gauge. So let's fix that. And this gauge is held in with four screws, so let's loosen them all up. And then we can pop the gauge out, and let's take a look at the bulb. <laughs> no wonder, we don't have a bulb. So let's install a new bulb, and hopefully that fixes that. And a quick test, beautiful, and I'm glad that's all it was. So now let's get the gauge back into place, and tighten down all four screws to hold it in. Beautiful, so let's try it out. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, the last two things we need to do super quick and easy, fuel doors and snorkel. So let's go get these fuel doors installed. So let's come around the side of the truck and there are two fuel doors back here. We'll start with the main fuel tank and all we need to do is remove the six bolts holding the stock fuel filler in. Then we can place the new fuel door over the stock one and then screw down the six brand new stainless steel bolts like so. Now let's open it up. And there's one more bolt we need to tighten that holds down the fuel filler cap. And then we can lock up the fuel door. And check this out, this looks so good. Now we have a key to unlock it and to lock it so nobody could put anything in our fuel tank. And not only that, but this looks amazing, especially compared to the old school style. 
So now let's install the other fuel cap on the auxiliary tank and instead of showing you the entire process, out with the old and in with the new. And the last thing to do is get my keychain and put the new key on there. That way when I fill up, I'll be able to open the fuel tank. So these look great and they function. Nobody could get in here and put anything in the fuel tanks. Perfect, one more thing left to do. And the last thing is to install a snorkel. All this is is a PVC coupler pipe. And the reason why this is so important to do is because we're actually gonna be using this truck off-road, for real. We're gonna have water up to here, but we're gonna be pushing a bow wake. A bow wake could potentially come up and over, and then this is where the air intake is for the engine. So if a bow wake comes over and floods this, well, we could ingest water into the engine, which could cause it to hydro lock. So a simple solution is just to raise this up a little bit. And that's where this PVC pipe will come in handy. We're gonna make it look nice. It's not gonna look cheap, and it's actually gonna look like it fits. Plus, it's gonna be completely functional. So let's go paint this black. Now anytime you paint, prep is the most important thing. We're gonna be using an adhesion promoter primer and the same brand we're gonna be using a flat protective enamel. Now to prep our PVC, you wanna make sure you scuff up the surface. So we're using 400 grit, so it has some scratches on it for the paint to bite into. And after it's all scuffed up, now we wanna grab some soapy water and just spray it down to remove all the dirt and debris and any dust and oils we have on here. Now we could go and paint this. So we're gonna start with an adhesion promoter. You wanna do three light and even coats, and this stuff is gonna help bond our black paint to the PVC so it's less likely to flake and it'll have better durability. And after letting that dry for five minutes, now we can move on to our flat black color coat. Just like the primer coat, we wanna spray three light and even coats working all the way around the PVC coupler. Make sure you use an overlapping pattern to build up the coats and always follow the instructions on the spray can, especially for drying times. Now as we wait for that to dry, let's remove the snorkel top. All we have to do is unscrew the hose clamp and then slide this off. And when the snorkel's dry, we can install it. And look at how good this came out. So set it in place, and then I'm gonna tap it down into the fitting so it's watertight. And finally, add that snorkel top and tighten it down. And check that out, that looks so good. Not only does it match the black and it looks amazing, but it's completely functional. If we have a bow wave and it comes over, we're not gonna suck in water now because this is lifted up. Now it is time to actually put this thing to the test. We're gonna go off-roading, we're gonna go through some water, and we're gonna go ride over some cars. So let's get out there. So there aren't too many legal spots to go off-road in New Jersey, but I do know a few in South Jersey, and to get to one of them, there are some decent ruts we need to cross. Luckily with this Hummer's 16 inch ground clearance and four wheel drive system, well, stuff like this is nothing. So let's go and test out the snorkel and the water fording capabilities of this truck. All right, check this out. We are about to test out that snorkel, and I mean test out. There is some deep water here. We're in between two cranberry bogs and there is a flooded path here. It goes over 30 inches, so we're allowed to go technically 30 inches before we have an issue, but we could definitely go over as long as it's not for extended periods of time and we're not stopping in it. We could stop in 30 inches. But that's why we have the snorkel, so that if we get a bow wake or something, we don't have to worry about water getting sucked in. So I aired down the tires. We have a nice big footprint and we're about to try this out and see if we make it. Time to put the Hummer to the test, baby. And that was insane, oh man. Let's turn around because we need to do that again. up to the top of the hood and remember our tires are 37 inches tall so we're in over three and a half feet of water effortlessly holy smokes that was insane so we were way above we were like right about here in water and there's a little bit of water in here not a big deal it drains out but we made it we made it all the way across that was insane the snorkel oh check this out we got some lily pads up here the snorkel worked perfect. 
That is exactly what we wanted. If there was a bow wake that came over, which we didn't have too much water coming up too high, but if there was a bow wake coming over, it wouldn't suck it in like the stock location. That's exactly what we wanted. And man, oh man, what a cool, cool thing to do. A cool thing to be able to go through that much water confidently. There was no tire spin. You could air down, no problem at all. Oh man, I love this thing. Now, the next thing we're doing is even crazier. Oh, I can't wait. You guys, I've been, I've been planning this out for so long. You guys are gonna love it, it is nuts. Okay, so to finish off this video, in the most epic way I could think of, we're gonna be doing something really crazy and awesome. I've been planning this out in my head for the longest time. Finally, I'm able to do it. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing. All right, and there's no better way to finish up this video than take my dream car, the Hummer, and drive it over a pair of cars. Every Hummer owner has to do this. It's just, it's a, a rite of passage. So we have two Honda Civics here. Don't worry, they're gonna get scrapped anyway for you Honda lovers. And we're gonna go and drive over them. Now I am a little bit nervous. This is, uh, watching a video is one thing, but actually doing it in real life is completely different. So it's, it's a little scary, but uh, what we're gonna be doing is pulling the car right up to the front here. There's a couple things that can go wrong. We need to make sure that the roof collapses evenly on each one so that we don't roll over. And then at the end, when we're gonna go off, I'm actually gonna go completely off. That's the goal. We're gonna go all the way to the back and drive completely off. I have to be careful because there is an overhang on the Hummer. It is armored, but I don't wanna damage it. I just got this thing. I don't wanna ruin it. So let's finish this up in an awesome finale. Let's drive over some Hondas. Okay, let's get my seatbelt on, and I can't believe I'm about to do this. I'm gonna air down the tires just a little bit, just so we could get some extra grip. And here we go. Let's drive over some cars. And I'm gonna drive up right to the front until I bump up on the cars. And now we're gonna send it. This is insane! I'm running over actual cars. This is so crazy. I can't see anything. The Hummer's just tilted up into the air. And I think I'm not getting any grip. Okay, basically I need more speed. So let's back off the cars and try again. Come on, baby, let's get some grip here. Oh, there we go. All right. Woo, yeah. All right, there we go. So that is how you finish off a video on your dream truck. How insane was that? Going over these cars was just, it's, it's like you can't feel the adrenaline through the video and it looks like nothing when you do it in a, a YouTube video, but in real life, it is intense. It's so cool. It's such a weird feeling to feel the roof collapse, the glass collapse, the car tilting sideways. And this thing is just a beast. The undercarriage protection worked, the central tire inflation system worked, everything worked. That is what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can tell if I'm excited here. But I do wanna thank you guys. This is incredible, and it's only because of you guys that I was able to get my dream truck. 
and uh, hopefully my videos have been helpful. And if you guys were helped by any of my videos, if you fix something on your car or truck, or if you're able to learn something new, comment below, tell me what you were able to learn. That's what drives me, that's what keeps me going, keeps me pushing, I haven't had a, a, a day off, a full entire day off in four years because of making videos and running this YouTube channel totally okay with me because that's what drives me teaching you guys teaching the whole entire world how to properly fix their car save money all that that's what it's all about to me so comment below and let me know what you've learned from my channel also let me know what your dream car or truck is this is incredible I hope the hard work that you guys put in the passion that you guys put in to your job to your work pays off and you'll be able to get your dream vehicle as always, thank you very much for all the support. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button and be sure to check the links in the description because I have some awesome stuff for you guys.